All right, on to lesson three. Um, here we're gonna take the sketch that we just made um, or sketches that we just made and ensure that the um, that they're all fully defined. Being fully defining all the sketches that you ever do is, is uh, really critical to your component um, so that it doesn't get accidentally altered later on uh, as say you're adding to it or editing it. So we wanna make sure everything is completely say rigid, constrained, defined um, as, you're, as you're building it. All right, so we're gonna continue with the previous module. We're gonna edit sketch on sketch one, which is what we did in the very first part of the lesson. Um, and we're just gonna make sure that it's fully defined. Uh, and we know that because all the lines should be black. If, if, they are, if any of them are blue, then it's undefined. Okay, I can tell now that it's fully defined, but let's, let's go into it. I, first, I, I clicked on the eyeball to pop it up. It was invisible before then. Um, and to, just to be clear, highlighting it, I mean, this is blue, but when, when it's un, when you're not hovering over it, if it's black, then it's constrained. So we look good here. Um, not much to say. Uh, let, well, other than if you do have a blue, if you do have a blue segment, um, it can be kind of tricky to figure out maybe what needs to be constrained or dimensioned. So, um, you know, for example, if you're just looking at this, where everything is completely uh, black except for the uh, hemisphere on the bottom. It's kind of tricky to see, okay, what's, what's unconstrained here. So one thing that I like to do if, if I'm having a hard time um, determining that is I'll just click on the blue line and I'll drag it around the screen, okay? And instantly I know, okay, well, both the end points are fixed, that's good. But what I'm seeing though, is that uh, there's a degree of freedom in that this point here of the, of the sphere does not have to be tangent to this vertical, even though we want it to be tangent. So I know instantly just by clicking and dragging on it that I need to use a tangent constraint between this guy and this guy. Oh God, and of course it's not, not gonna play Nicely with me, there it goes. Second time's a charm. Um, and so I knew that. We can try one other thing. Let's let's go like this. Okay, well, our, our circle's blue. What the heck's wrong with it? Um, we're gonna go over to it and we're gonna click on it. We're gonna start dragging around. All right, and oh, well, it, it only moves in this, this axis. Clearly it needs to be dimensioned to something so that it's rigid in the, what is that? The Y axis, I can't see. Um, yeah, that would be the Y axis. So um, that's when we go in and we dimension it back to what it was. My computer is glitching out, sorry. Ugh. Try again, there we go, gosh. All right, so this sketch is fully dimensioned. We are happy there. We'll click finish, finish sketch and move on. All right, use the browser to turn off the visibility for the first sketch, turn on the visibility for the second, right click and choose edit. Fully defining splines can be tricky and these splines are not fully defined. So yeah, they can be tricky. Um, All right, you see, all right, this is important. I clicked on um, make this sketch visible and it looks invisible. Uh, that's simply because of the perspective on it. So if I swing around, I can tell that it's clearly there, but it was invisible at the time. So if, if that ever happens to you, I would say, look at it orthogonally, which means just off of one of the, um, the main planes and you'll be able to see it like that. Okay, so we're gonna, 
They said to right click on this. This is just another way to open it up. You can double click on it, it'll edit it. Um, but we're gonna right click and click edit sketch. And there we are. Well, real quick, before we look at the tutorial, um, let's just think about what are the things about each of these splines that needs to be def uh, dimensioned or constrained in order to fully define it. Um, and I'm kind of going on a whim right now because uh, I, I don't I don't actually know, um, but I think we can figure it out. So here on this spline, we have this thing that defines angle, right? Defines angle and it defines magnitude. So my thought is that we need to define the angle of this and the magnitude of it, um, along with this one as well. And we need to define the three points too, because they can, they can move around in space as well. So those need to be fixed with respect to the origin or with respect to something, um, as well as these, uh, the, the angle of each of these, um, I forget what they call them, these green lines and uh, as well as the magnitude. For this one down here, I think it's a little bit more straightforward, maybe a little bit more intuitive. Uh, you simply need to locate or dimension with, again, with respect to the origin would be an easy thing to do. Um, the point, Point here that the, the, the endpoints and also the nodes, uh, these these need to be dimensioned as well. Now let's see, let's see what they have us do. Okay. Press the D key on the keyboard to open up the dimension tool and add dimensions between one of these splines endpoints and the sketch origin. There we have it. So they're having us define the endpoints with respect to the origin. Adding a horizontal dimension and adding a vertical dimension will lock the end point into place. Great. Our intuition didn't fail us. <sighs> Until that happened, it's showing an angle. I'm gonna right click and see if it'll get me out of this angle thing, which it won't. No. Let's try again. Maybe it's maybe it thought I was clicking this this guy here, which I, I didn't want to be. All right, so yeah, I think I was clicking this and I want to click that. There we go. And there there again, uh, they'll probably have us define the angle of that um, as as part of constraining it. I don't know what they wanted this at. Let's put it at three for now. Uh, let's go ahead and give us some height as well. Uh, let's call that three for now as well. 3.25 and 2.5. All right, let's come back. We know how to do this by now. We double click 2.5, 3.25. Um, all right, we've locked only one of the endpoints. All right, there's a midpoint and another in the, in the right endpoint as well. Um, repeat this process to define the splines, other end point. Okay. Simple enough, end point, end point, 2.5. Here's the thing, uh, do this right now before I do it. So pause this video if you haven't done so at, or actually, I guess after I say it, but I want this to be equal to using parametrics, okay? So um, I want this dimension to equal the other endpoints um, vertical dimension, okay? And how do I do that? Go ahead, give you pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, um, you can do that in two different ways. You can come over here and click on this. All right, and we know that that's D21, or I can simply type in D21, all right? And it'll already reference this 2.5 over here. Okay, that's, that's parametrics and that's super powerful. So if you wanna come in and you wanna know that these are always equal to each other, no matter what you change this to, make that equal to that as, as, as a function. On the contrary, let's let's take this a step further. All right, and I, I don't know if it'll work in this spot, but I think it will. 
if you want the right side as a function of the left side, but you want it to be two times, like a, add a multiplier to it or a factor to it, um, you're going to put the dimension of interest in, okay? And then you're gonna put the multiplier or the factor that you're scaling it by uh, right next to it, all right? You're writing an equation, if you will. Um, so I, let's say I want the right side to always be, no matter what, I want it to always be two times that of the left side in magnitude. Well, then I'm gonna do this. See that? Okay, so it instantly shoots up and, and it shows that the value is five, but it's gonna change if I make this one. Okay, and that's two, that's one. So let's go back to 2.5. Let's take this guy back to just equal to using parametrics. Um, there we have it. And we're gonna go back into our dimension tool. Define this using parametrics, excuse me. All right. They still have it using, uh, showing this comb feature here. That, that just, it shows magnitude and whatnot, but I, I didn't like that very much. So I'm, I've kept it off. Uh, to begin defining the splines handles, add a length value to the handle. Notice the handles are still not defined because they need an angle reference. So that we talked about this earlier. We kind of inferred this was going to happen. Um, so that's what we've that's what we've got to do. We're going to define uh, the length of the handle, the magnitude. And again, we talked about this, I think, in the last uh, module. And that is, if we go, if we take this too high, then all we're going to be defining here is the horizontal component of this handle. All right, if we take it too far to the left or the right, we're going to be defining just the horizontal part of this handle. We want to define the magnitude of it, okay, which means we want the dimension to run parallel uh, to the handle itself. So let's just do that. Let's call it 1.5. Let's do it to all of our handles here. Um, and let's make them all equal. Ugh. Gosh, see, see that it was, I need to zoom in because it's not playing nicely. Uh, there, now it is. All right, let's make them equal to D24. All right, simply because I don't like the, the, the look of this spline, it's not, it doesn't look very nice. Um, let's find a function where it does. Uh, kind of creates a nice S sine wave. Um, so maybe we do, uh, we already got a D24 highlight, let's divide it by two. Okay, I'm a little closer. Um, once we define our magnitude, it might look a little bit better. Uh, not our magnitude, our, um, our angle. Yeah, yeah, so we're, we're almost there. Go like this. Uh, not, let's add a coincident constraint. Oof, didn't like that, sorry. Uh, control Z. Let's put this point, end point equal to that. All right. Ah, here we go. One more thing. So about just the about the endpoints. Before we define the angles angles of the handles, which which should be the last thing we have to do uh, for this spline to be fully constrained, uh, there's also one more thing, and it's a it's kind of hard to catch, um, and that is uh, the location of this guy. Okay, we can drag it anywhere around this radius here and we don't like that. So we want it to be constrained vertically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a line and this might not be the most elegant way of doing it. It's just, uh, it's, it's kind of where my brain goes to. Um, so I'm gonna create a line, open my sketch palette, make it, uh, 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 excuse me, a construction line. 
And then I'm going to go in, I'm going to make a coincident constraint between that and that. So now we, sh we shouldn't, if I did this right, we shouldn't be able to drag this guy anywhere. We can't, right? We've defined its magnitude, now it has to lie on that line. So that's great. Um, what do they want us to define? Press the L key on the keyboard to activate the construction option. Draw a horizontal line beginning at the origin and press the escape control panel. Oh, I see. So um, they're doing that uh, just simply. So, so they're doing kind of what we did here where we're creating a construction line. It's invisible to when you go and um, extrude something that they're super helpful inside of a sketch, especially if you need to constrain something. So uh, they're having us draw a horizontal line uh, and they're making it construction. So inside the sketch palette, construction line, that's this guy here. And click escape to get out of the line function. And now we should be able to click just, just click dimension, click on your handle, click on this and it should automatically uh, go into an angle um, dimension. So 45. Let's do the same thing here. See that if, if we go from different spots, um, it'll, it'll just automatically snap to the um, angle of interest, if you will, or what I guess the angle that makes the most sense between the two plane or the, the two segments. Um, we could do it one of two ways here. We could say 45 degrees here, or we could say 180 degrees minus 45 degrees here. So whichever one you want, it'll give us the same thing. Cool. All right, this spline still, and I've kind of abandoned all hope on like making the sketch look good. We talked about that earlier. I would probably go back in and make this look nice uh, at the end and, and maybe we'll do that here. Um, but still this spline is not fully defined, okay? Um, it seems like it should be, but there's one more thing and I'm gonna let you think about it real quick. Maybe even pause the video and try and do it yourself. And and then we'll and then I'll show show you right right after. Okay, the last thing we need to define here is the angle of the handle in the middle. Uh, that's something we haven't done yet. Uh, so we're gonna do it the same way. Oh, I clicked on the wrong the wrong thing. So exit out, retry. Got to kind of zoom in here to make sure we're highlighting the handle and not some point. Okay. Four. Ooh, there we go. And we're right. We know we're fully constrained because that thing just turned black. Um, and that's a beautiful looking curve. That's a sine wave there. Everything's at a 45. Um, cool. That's great. On to fully defining the next spline. Repeat seven, sorry, repeat step seven through nine to fully define the second handle. The spline will turn black to indicate that it's fully defined. Great, did that. Um, fully defined splines can sometimes be tricky. Constraints can be added to the second spline's control frame in order to expedite the process of defining the spline. Add horizontal, vertical, and equal constraints to the frame to begin defining it. Okay, uh, let's do that. Let's let me let me look onto some of these next steps here. Just a second. All right, so we can define this next one as they had um, suggested using constraints, or we can simply define each of these four dots in, in space and with respect to the origin. So both the horizontal and the um, uh, uh, vertical component of, of the coordinate. Um, there's actually one other way, let's see, we could potentially do it. We could define the angle between these points. Um, I'm trying to think if there's, 
another possible way of doing it. Can you define this angle? Well, I mean, let's just start. Let's let's try and get this. And the goal here is going to be to make this line black. Uh, and let's just let's just go for it. So I'm going to say 45. And 45. Great. And I'm going to say also 45 here. Whoa. That didn't like that very much. So I'm going to go back on that. Okay, that's better. Um, okay, we're going to go like this here to here. It's going to equal 2.5 here to here. It's also going to equal. 2.5 and here's where I mean my OCD is kicking in. I kind of want to make this a mirror of that, but in order to do that, we need to understand where this point should lie, which is not straightforward. Um, you know, if if we wanted to be just simple about it, we could. Uh, we could just do this. And I, I think for the sake of time, let's just be simple about it. It's not going to be the same, but that's okay. So, yikes. Okay. So we have turned this spline black as well. Um, and in order to do that, and we could have done it in many different ways, we defined the angle of each of these um, dotted lines. And then we went through and we uh, uh, physically defined the coordinates, if you will, the, the horizontal, horizontal and vertical components of each of these um, points in space different ways um, to do that. But as you can see, you can get these really nice complex curves um, using the spline tool. Finish sketch, all right, moving right along. Open up the last one. Again, we can't see it, so we're gonna rotate till we can just to make sure it's there, but we can right click, edit sketch. Here we are. Um, this should be pretty easy to fully constrain, right? Like when you're looking at this, what all is necessary um, to turn this thing black? Think about that, you know, for a second. Okay, we need the length of the slot. Uh, we need the diameter of the slot. And then we need each point, each end point of the slot to be fixed in space. Uh, so, you know, for this one, for example, we need the height with respect to the origin. And we need the distance. And the reason that snaps too, okay, we don't need to, we don't need to necessarily define this dot because we already have uh, with this length of 10. So uh, we've simply just defined one endpoint um, and then the other endpoint with respect to the first one. So. Yeah, it's already set, uh, set and done. Uh, this one here, uh, let's see, it's pretty much the same thing, right? It was, it was constructed differently uh, using slot. So one of these was con uh, constructed using center to center, the other one was center point slot, but it's the same, uh, same type of slot, if you will. So. Uh, we'll constrain it in the same way. Um, it looks like we don't have any dimensions on it. So the first thing we want is going to be the diameter of the slot or the width of it, 2.5. Um, you see that it's already locked this in place. And that is because 
Um, I believe we have a constraint, a vertical constraint with these. Um, and let's see, those are horizontal. I'm gonna need to think about this for a second. Is that over constraining it? No. There we go. Um, this one might be a little bit trickier. Let's see what our tutorial, well, we need to catch up anyway. Uh, oh, that might be the next one. Oh, well, there's not much left there. All right, we're gonna do this. So we've already defined its path. Um, and we've defined the location of that path, which is good. Uh, one thing we don't have is the slot width. Um, so let's do that. And that's all we really needed. Okay. And we're fully constrained. We're in the green zone. That's the end of that one.